Hey, welcome back, dude, to another beautiful week. I uh, hope you get to a good start so far. Um, special week for us, for the Christians, those that believe in Christ and live for Christ and Christ live in us, uh, that we, we, uh, we are celebrating the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, uh, the one that died for us and, 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 and loved us um, so we can be reconciled to the Father when our sins separated us from the Father that Jesus loved us so much that he endured the cross. The Bible said he despised the shame just so we can reconcile, so can he can reconcile us back to the Father. When sin separated us, love and, 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 and brought us back to the Father. Uh, Jesus is, is love. The Bible said that God is love. He doesn't love. He is love. So when you think, so the perfect definition for love is God. According to the Bible, God is love. So that's the definition. Who is love? Love is God. Who is God? God is love. Okay. And wow. And he loves us so much that he chastises us, the ones that he loves. Um, beautiful. That is so, so beautiful. So we don't be spoiled children. Okay. So, so he can work his purpose in our lives. And today we're going to be on um, study number seven, which is a good steward, um, beautiful class. Um, just want to get your attention for a short while, like a plant a seed in your in your thoughts, in your heart. Okay. And we're still on unit one, which is the evidence of a Christian. And a good steward is definitely <laughs> evident of a good Christian. So let's ask the Holy Spirit to give us insight and understanding of this class. Amen. Heavenly Father God, we thank you so, so much, God, for each and every time that you invite us to your table, that we can sup with you, that we can eat with you, that we can drink from your cup, God, that you can just pour out your wisdom upon us, God, that we can eat your word, and the Holy Spirit will give us clarity and understanding, Lord God, of the word, Lord God, so we ask you to plant your seed today, God, in the youth, in their hearts, God, in their mind, God, that they can stay focused on you, that they can understand what they're reading, they can understand what they're studying, God, they can understand, Lord God, the purpose that you have for their life, which will change their life, God, and transform them, God, into the men and your men and your women that you will have them to be. God, that is my prayer today, God, that you will transform their lives, God, that they can see spiritually, God, spiritual things, God, that they don't put their affection and waste their time on temporary things down here, that they will set their affection, God, on the things above and send the heavenly places, God. Oh, God, because you said in your word, wherever your treasure is, that's where your heart would be also. God, I pray that their hearts, God, of the youth will be in heaven, God, will be on you today and forevermore, God. So, ask you, God, be with your youth today, God. Bless them, God, with, your, with, with wisdom and understanding, God. And I just ask you, God, keep them in your path, Lord, that you may use them for your glory in this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, you, um, sincerely, that's my prayer for you, that God would transform your life uh, so you can see what, how God, you can see yourself, how God can see you. Man, with a purpose, you know, with life flowing out of you. Man, not with the depression and, and just surviving, no. God got man. God got a, a purpose for each and every one of us. That's why we. That's why we are stewards. You know, everybody is a steward. Okay. That's why this that this adjective here say good. You can either, you can be a good steward. You can be a bad steward. You can be an energetic steward. You can be a lazy steward. But in a way, everybody is a steward. Okay. Now let's start reading that Matthew. Chapter 25, verse 14. And this is Jesus um, giving us um, understanding, okay? He, he give us things that we um, can understand in the earthly realm so he can teach us things, how it works in the spirit realm, okay? That's how God loves so much. In other words, he's breaking it down. He's breaking the problem down to uh, a, a lower denominator, okay? He, he, he's breaking it down to a simple form that we can relate to. That's how much he loves us, that he wants us to get the understanding of what he's saying. So this is what he's teaching in Matthew 25, 14. He said, For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country 
who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. And to one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, and each according to his own ability. And immediately he went on a journey. Then he who had received five talents went and traded with them and made another five talents. And likewise, he who had two talents gained two talents more. But he who had received one talent went and dug in the ground and hid the Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled the accounts with them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained besides them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of of the Lord. Amen. That's beautiful right there. Um, our memory verse is, Blessed is the servant who is, whose master find him doing so when he comes. And our main idea is stewardship is a principle that should govern all areas of the believer's life. We're going to get into that. Yeah, it's the principle. It's the driving force Stewardship is a driving force, a priority that should govern all the areas of a believer's life. The three objectives that we're going to accomplish today is to know the biblical principles on stewardship of time, stewardship of talents, and stewardship of money. To understand the true scale of priorities of time, talent, and money. Time, talent, and money. To, and three, to establish the responsibilities in the use of talents and good that God has given to us. Amen. God is, you know, Jesus himself, this is beautiful because Jesus, like I was saying earlier, Jesus is breaking this, his teaching down to simplicity form so that we, we can get a grasp or some understanding of what he's saying to us in the spiritual realm, okay? And so he's, the, the, the journeyman is going on a far trip, okay? So which he did when he had, the father had risen him from the dead and he had risen um, to, to the glory of the father and sit on his right hand that, that he said, I'm not gonna leave you to comfort this, but the Holy Spirit gonna come and abide with you. He gonna lead you to all spirit, truth, and everything that I say to you, he's gonna bring it back to your remembrance. And he can convict the world of sin, you know, that's why the, the job of the Holy Spirit is Jesus was giving this account to his um, uh, apostles, which were disciples still at the time. And he told them, wait in Jerusalem. He said, wait for the promise. Wait. What is the promise? The Holy Spirit is going to come and fill them with power. He said, after you have received the power, then you can go out into all Jerusalem, Judea, and all the areas of the, of the earth and just preach the gospel because now you are equipped. Jesus, I got to equip you first, okay? You have to be equipped. And so now he, he said that now since he is on a far trip, he had left us. He left his disciples. He left his apostles. He left now the followers of him, his believers, those that follow him, that, that he gave them gifts and talents and money and time <laughs> And all these things that we got to be accountable for, we got to be responsible for, and we will be accountable for, and we will be um, responsible for because the Bible says that every man is going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ and give an account of what he has done, okay? We got to give an account. Believe nobody slides by rich man, poor man, big man, small man, tall man, short man. It, it, it doesn't matter, okay? Everybody, no matter what, what, what society or ethnic group you belong to, no matter the color of your skin, no matter the color of your, of your intelligence, what, what college you graduated from, your honors and, and all the degrees you got, none of that is going to matter when we stand before the Holy, the Holy God, okay? 
and give accountability of our stewardship. Everybody, nobody's going to skip the line. Nobody's going to break the line. Everybody is going to give, got to go through this process. And everybody will go through this process, whether you believe it or whether you don't believe it. it just doesn't, the Bible said just because we don't believe doesn't mean make the word of God to no effect. The word of God is true. It's going to happen. You know, you might, somebody say, I don't believe electricity in that because I can't see it. When you stick your finger into the socket, then you're going to get left, you're going to get shocked, okay? Just because you don't believe, it's not going to stop electricity from flowing. So whether you believe or whether you don't believe, the Bible said this is going to happen. So you're going to give an accountability uh, of what we're going to do or what we do with the things that God has entrusted us with. You know, if... if uh, <laughs> First of all, a steward. You know what a steward really is? It's a, a steward is an administrator. Okay, it, it, in, in terms I want to I want to use I want to um, see if you understand this. Okay, it's like an ambassador. You want an ambassador is a representative of the person who sent you. Okay, or the thing that sent you. So, in other words, if I would be an ambassador, okay for our church, okay? And so, and, the, and, the, and my pastors um, sent me to another congregation uh, church to visit and and just to befriend people and just to um, represent um, the Good Shepherd, okay? And I am the ambassador. I'm speaking, I'm standing in, in, in the seat. I'm sitting in the seat and I'm standing in the place of the whole church, starting from the pastors, well, first starting from Christ, <laughs> and then the pastors, you know, the leaders, the congregation, all the way down to the smallest newborn baby that's inside that church. I'm representative, representing um, the Good Shepherd, okay, on 715 Persian Road in Raleigh, North Carolina. I am representing that church, okay? So, when I'm in another setting and I'm representing the Good Shepherd, okay, that means I'm not going to act like I want to act. I'm not going to say things that I want to say. I'm not going to answer how I want to answer because I'm not representing myself. Right? <laughs> I'm representing the, the Good Shepherd. And so I have to, everything that I do, everything I say, everything I minister, everything I receive, everything, um, that, everything. Um, that's involved involving me is involving the good shepherd, okay? So that's what I'm saying. So I got to be a good steward. So when I got to give an account, when I get back and the pastor said, wow, I am the pastor from that church call and say, you were acting this way. You said this here. And, he, and Dennis, you know, we don't do that here. We don't act like this here. So was I really a good steward? Did they send me as a good ambassador to stay? I got to have accountability now. No. When I get back, they just say, wow, well, well done. The pastor should say, well done, um, my brother, Brother Dennis. Thank you for being faithful and true to, to your calling and to God and, and representing us, you know, as, as pastors over, over this church. And, man, that is so beautiful when you can say that. that that's what Christ said. He said, I'm going to go away and I'm going to leave you guys in charge down here. Of course, the Holy Spirit is going to be with you to guide you. But everybody is gonna is, is gonna have a given account. I'm gonna leave you with with with, with gifts. I'm gonna leave you with with talents. I'm gonna leave you um, with, with 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 authority. <laughs> you think all these people that making it making um, the, the house that that's that, that's that, that making rules and laws? You think they're not gonna be accountable to God? You think it's gonna make laws according to the what what um, their lifestyle? Don't matter, and without compassion about somebody else, they're just making rules, making laws, making laws, and you don't you don't believe that they're gonna give accountability. Man, everybody's on authority. Everybody, everybody's on authority. Matter of fact, authority comes from 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 above. Authority, authority comes from God. Even when Jesus was talking to the Pilate, you know, he was saying Pilate was telling him how much authority he had to crucify him. Or well, set him free, and Jesus said, "You don't have no power or authority at all. If my Father, Heaven, and Father didn't even get, didn't give it to you, so everybody's gonna be accountable. Governors, presidents, lawmakers, everybody, everybody's gonna be accountable. You, you got to get this. 
Nobody, don't let nobody trick you. Don't let nobody deceive you. Everybody's going to be accountable. Whether you want to live um, lavishly now, like the rich man did, and, and but Lazarus, when, when the time came, when the boats were closed, and God took his spirit back, and the rich man died, and Lazarus died, both of them died, and both of them went somewhere, but it was two different places. One was suffering, and one was in, <laughs> in peace. I mean, so it's, and, and that was a truth. That, that wasn't really a parable. That was, that was the truth. That was really what happened. So whether you're rich, poor, um, tall, skinny, like I said, no matter what color your skin is, no matter what your beliefs are, your ethnic beliefs, no matter what your social status is and all this, what school you graduated from and how many degrees you got and what was your occupation in life and all that, none of that going to matter if you didn't use it for Christ. If you didn't use it for the glory of God, if you didn't use it to edify the body of Christ, what God has given you, then when he come to get his accountability, and you and you, he gonna say either you use my talent and everything that I given you to be a good steward, and you gain more, okay, or you buried it. Or other words, buried means you you use it for yourself, for your own will, or whatever. You didn't use it for me. You use it for your own glory. You did with it what you wanted to do with it, not what I expected you to do with it. This is big, you. I'm telling you. Why well, you think you got all these beautiful singles out there that's in the world right now with beautiful voices? Yeah, because God gave them that, that, that voice. The world didn't give it to them. God gave it to them, but they chose to use it for the world and use it for God. And they got to be accountable one day. They're going to be accountable. Don't think nobody gets away. And I ain't saying God's going to punish them. I, I ain't saying that. I'm just saying they're going to be accountable. I'm going to be accountable. Whatever instrument that, that, that we're going to be used, we're going to be accountable. Well, the devil's going to use it. It's just like a piano. A piano just sitting there. A keyboard just sitting there. A, get, a guitar maybe just sitting there. It, it's, it's in the hands of the, of the player or who, who, how, how they use it. They, one could pick up the same guitar and play beautiful gospel worship music, glorifying God. And the other could pick it up and play horror metal, rock, rock and roll, talking about Satan and all this, killing them, all this crazy crazy stuff that, that high on drugs and all that. Same guitar, same piano, same keyboard, same same drums. But it's the person, it's the steward who's using that. And I'm telling you, everybody's going to be accountable. Nobody gets away. So by God had given you today, well, I'm telling you, use it for his glory. Use it for his glory. Not to edify yourself, don't bury it. Bury it just like edifying yourself. You doing what you want to do with it. Selfish, no. God gave it to us, you give it back. That's why God does. That's, that's, that's why we are called a good steward. And he told us that he told these, these, these two young servants. Oh, because they was happy to see him. They say, Oh Lord, I'm glad you're back. I got some good news. You gave me five talent. He said, But I gave you five more. And the other said, well, I had two. And he said, I got two more. So, and the one that said, um, well, I, well, it didn't finish the story in the scriptures, but the other one said, yeah, I know that you was a hard man. He said, so I buried it, you know. And God called him lazy, worthless, you know, you know, steward, man. Because everybody got to get accountable. But the two, but the one that did what they supposed to do, the, the two good stewards, that did what they supposed to do with what God had given them, he said, Wow, well done, well done, well done. Good job, awesome job, my good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things, but I'm going to make you ruler over many. What did Jesus say? Jesus said, if I can trust you with two talents and you make two more. <laughs> well done, I'm, I'm, I'm going to make you ruler over many things. If I give you five, you can make five more. Even if that one is saying, Lord, you gave me one. He said he gave everybody to their ability. So he didn't give nobody no more and no less. So whatever God give you to get work, work. If he gave you a voice to sing only, then sing only. If he if he gave you the, the, the multi gifts to sing, preach, band line, well, everybody got to preach in them because the Bible said go out and preach the kingdom of God to all the creatures, you know, to, that the Lord is at hand to teach them to be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I mean, so we all, that's our duty just as being a follower of Christ just to go out and make disciples. That's our job. So that's a duty. So we already got that preaching part in us. 
You ain't about, uh, uh, no, no, no. It's all about just going out and sharing the gospel, which is the good news to others. Just like it was given to us. Our job is just to testify of the goodness and the saving grace of Jesus Christ. Man, that's it. So if that one that came back and said, Lord, if that one that you gave me, I made one more. I got two now. Because it ain't it, it ain't how much that you got is what what did you do with what you had. That, that's that's the big thing. You know, if the one with five came and said, God, you gave me five, but I didn't give him one. But he went forward. I, I still see him, God said, good, good. Well done, my good and faithful servant. I still can see him saying that. Because it ain't what how much for what it ain't how much he gained from it is what he did with it. He was out there using it, working it, trying. Everybody I preached to and ministered to and witnessed to, they didn't get saved. But not in front of me. You know, I might plant the seed. The Bible said one plant and one water, but God's the one that give the increase. But right then on the spot, it didn't. And then some they get, that I, I, I prayed with, introduced Christ to, and they said, I want to receive Christ. And I prayed with them right then and led them to Christ right there on the spot. But you think it was just that one time? I don't think so. I'm pretty sure somebody else already had labored. Somebody already been a good steward and done what God had called them to do up to the point where we're being used. So I can't say, oh yeah, I don't want to save you. I got to save you. Well, I didn't get nobody saved. I couldn't even save myself. So I'm telling you, whatever God has given you, oh, use it for his glory. Oh, he's going to reward you. Oh my God. And a reward is not just like, bless you with money, bless you with things, bless you. No. Man, he gonna give you a a, 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 tip, a heart so tender that when you when, when you when you use um what he is giving you for for the gospel's sake, and you see people being delivered, set free, and being healed, man, that joy that comes inside your spirit that they come over you is more more than gold money. Believe me, at that time, till you know that somebody is set free and God used you to do it, not for you to get the glory, just saying God, thank you for using me. That I want to be a good steward. Man, that is a rewarding, a rewarding experience. Believe me, you. Believe me, it ain't the alcohol, it ain't the drugs, it ain't all this caught up in this um, fantasy world that's gonna come crashing down one day. But we gotta give it accountability. Believe me, when everybody gonna give accountability, what they done inside the body, in their bodies, whether it's good or whether it's bad. I'm trusting you today, you, that you're gonna do good, especially after hearing this, 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 this beautiful lesson. Okay. So let Jesus Christ work in your heart tremendously and richly, okay? Let his grace abound in you richly and may you just follow him and give your life to him and submit yourself to him and just follow him and, and trust in him. Listen to his voice, through his word, read his word. Ask, ask God to fill you with his Holy Spirit so you can have wisdom and understanding what, you, what you're what learning, that you can be, that, that you can walk in what you're learning. If you can put in action what you have been reading and studying it, hey, man, let God just use you. And I know you can do it, you. I know you can do it. You know why? Because I know God can do it. My, my trust is in God, not in you, but I'm trusting God can use you. Amen? See you next time. Love you in Jesus' name.